from Rippy to Russell. And um, then uh, a couple years later, wrote my, well, actually just came out this year, my second book, which is Wild Turkey Musings. But it's all about the history of wild turkey. Uh, I take a deep dive into the different expressions, the brand history going as far back as the 1800s. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some, uh, there's a lot of facts in there that people don't, or probably don't know about wild turkey that, uh, for example, wild turkey never started as a, a distillery. Wild turkey was a, a grocery, a wholesale grocer's house brand. That's what wild turkey started as. But we can get into more of that uh, uh, as we go through the night. But uh, yeah, my blog is rarebird101.com. Uh, you can check out my books at wildturkeybook.com. I'm on Instagram at rarebird101 and on Twitter at rbird101. But uh, happy to be here. Um, love anything wild turkey. I love anything whiskey, especially bourbon uh, and rye. So it should be a fun time. And at any point in time, if you guys have any questions about the expressions that we're sipping, happy to answer them for you. Uh, whether it has to do with the history or what it's composed of um, or how hard it is to find it or whatever pricing happy to answer that for you i don't work for campari i don't work for wild turkey um, but i work with them sometimes so uh, happy to help and glad to be here thank you uh thank you dj uh so like at the at the end towards the tasting uh we'll do a little drawing for the for the two books that um yep. dj is um graciously going to donate for those who jumped on so he, he'll send them he'll send them to me and i'll get them to you or i can send them and, directly to you whatever whatever's them easier directly to whoever wins so we can yep. make that content sure all thing. right so sure. without further ado let's dive into some 101 all right so just taste or nosing and tasting through this, just uh, gradually give out your notes and, um, you know, dive in. I'll give you a little, little, uh, little bit of info on what you're, what you're sipping here. I'm assuming this is a bottle that was probably purchased within the last year or so. Um, so this is a, a whiskey that's typically aged around six to eight years. Eddie tells me that uh, the youngest whiskey they put in it is six and a half years. It's not age dated. At least in the United States, it's not. In Japan, it is age stated. It has an eight-year age statement in Japan um, and South Korea, um, as well as some other Asian uh, markets and uh, sometimes in Australia. But uh, it's 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley. Um, it is aged in traditional wood-clad rick houses. It's not heat-cycled warehouses like you find at Woodford or Old Forester. These are all mother nature. So the barrels uh, get put up in a rack and they sit in there for six and a half to eight years um, until uh, Eddie Russell, who was the master distiller, along with his father, Jimmy Russell, uh, determined that uh, it's right for a particular expression. And it goes into 101. Uh, Wild Turkey 101 batch size is about a thousand barrels which sounds like a lot, but for the industry, that's not, you know, it's not big and it's not small. Um, the wild Turkey considers a small batch, 200 barrels. Um, so this is a thousand. So it's, it's a good bit more than a small batch, but you know, it's, uh, I'm sure there's products out there that have a lot more barrels in it than that. Um, and, uh, let's see what else to know about it. Obviously one on one proof and it can be found for about, depending on your market, somewhere between 20 and 30 bucks uh, around here, it's around 25 for a 750. Um, but I've seen it as low as 1799 in some markets. And I've seen it as high as 30 bucks in some markets, it just kind of depends on where you live. But the beauty about 101 that uh, for people that are new to wild turkey that I always like to pass along is that you can find 101 in any size, like you can find it from 50 milliliters all the way to a handle. So um, it comes in in pretty much every size and format that you can find. So including plastic travel bottles for camping and stuff like that. So if if you want to dig into wild turkey and you're not, it's not something you're familiar with, shouldn't be hard to find a very small bottle to take home and give it a whirl. Um, but I'm sure that most of you in this chat have had wild turkey before. So. All right. Thank you, David. Oh, you're welcome. 
Do you know who they use for their Cooper? Is it are they an independent stave or do they use a well I know that they have a relationship with independent stave and independent stave handles all of their experimental stuff that they do for master's keep and uh, some other stuff they've got in the works. So it wouldn't surprise me if independent stave is, is who they use, but honestly don't know who they're using right now, but it's probably independent stave. That would be my first guess. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I'm 90% sure that's who they're using. And I apologize if my voice goes out. I've had a sore throat. And then today I pulled somehow pulled like a muscle in my throat so when I swallow, it hurts real bad. So if you see me wince, it's not the whiskey. <laughs> it's just I'm, I'm in pain. So were, were you celebrating the, the the Twitter followers? Oh yeah, man, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I I didn't even get active on Twitter till like 2017, 2018, and I didn't even really like it at first. But now I do. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, it's got a bunch of crap on it sometimes. But I mean, I I, I like thing about Instagram is it, you know, it's all photo and video based and the, there's not a lot of like, I mean, there's comments and stuff, but the banter is kind of limited, you know, and like, I like to write. So Twitter is more of that kind of format where it's more text based. than so I tend to hang out on Twitter a little bit more than Instagram. It's been a long time. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually just sat down and nosed and picked apart 101. It's usually just, I'm pouring couple of fingers of it and just you know relaxing for the evening but it's a burst of it's a burst of the cinnamon red hot settled fireball candy on the nose um a little bit of a little bit of brown sugar and then even in the taste i get a i get a, a slight tart note almost like a almost like those old school certs um a little bit of green apple and some some honey i pull some citrus and honey like you said yeah i definitely got a little citrus it's you know you forget how good this is and how creamy it is um for just sitting down and after dinner and yeah you know you want to hear a funny story because I, I i noticed you're smoking a cigar which i love cigars by the way um but i, I usually have mine in the morning um <laughs> so you know everybody's kind of got a baseline so like if you use like some people like they'll ask me like how can you taste whiskey after you've smoked a cigar you know like because i tend to have one a, a good bit in the mornings and um and, and they're like oh when i smoke a cigar my palate's wrecked for like two days first of all i'm kind of like how fast are you smoking that cigar <laughs> but anyway um you know it, it's it's all about baseline so if like you're used to something you know and that's your baseline then it's easy to kind of you know do stuff and like not affect it um and a funny story to do with that is Bruce was telling Bruce Russell, this is Jimmy Russell's grandson, Eddie Russell's son. The last time we were at Wild Turkey, um, he told us this really funny story. He said that, uh, you know, Jimmy used to chew tobacco and um, for, for many years. And that was his baseline. So like when he would taste whiskey, he would have the tobacco in his mouth and he would taste the whiskey. And then one day they got to some barrel and he was just like, God, this barrel's like something's wrong with it. Some whiskey, something wrong with it. And they're like, what, what, what do you mean? He's like, I don't know. This something's not right about this barrel. Might have to get rid of this whiskey. And he's like, Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. He puts the tobacco in his lip and takes, and like, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Cause that was his baseline. I mean, that was what yeah. you know he was used to. So anyway, I thought that was a funny story, but I never knew that. I never knew that Jimmy all those years was tasting all that dusty Turkey with a wad of tobacco in his mouth. So you sure didn't. None of that tobacco got into the whiskey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never know. Some of that, some of that dusty's a little too sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so with 101, it's really kind of, it's, it's always, okay. So there's, there's some 101s that are better than others, but you'll always find vanilla caramel. I always find orange peel in 101. Some of y'all mentioned cit citrus. I get uh -huh. like a dried orange peel almost all the time. I do get a little cinnamon, not as much as, as Eric was talking about, but it depends on the batch. But sometimes like, but I always get a little cinnamon here and there, it's almost like a spiced orange. So you could say, well, the cinnamon and the orange can go well together. Um, and uh, really, and then, you know, you'll, you'll get like vanilla and caramel-esque notes, like brown sugar and toffee and honey and all these things are kind of related. Um, so any of those notes make perfect sense to me. Um, confectioner, sugar. Sometimes if it's a lighter batch, um, but yeah, 
good stuff. It's solid. I mean, twenty five dollars, probably the best deal in bourbon still. Um, to me, this and like people shake their heads sometimes, but I like Evan Williams Black Label. I think for eighteen bucks or whatever, Evan Williams Black Label is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I actually like the black better than the white, which a lot of people are like, "What really?" Like, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the, to me, one hundred one's still the best deal in bourbon. Kind of like uh, it's kind of like your. Let me be crass for a second. It's kind of like your fuck buddy in college. It's always there. You know, yeah. It's, it's the most. It's it's the most reliable. Yeah, I mean, if I was stuck on a desert island and a all I had was a handle of one hundred one, I, I would be happy with that. <laughs> That'd be fine. Anybody else in the gallery get uh, what's your thoughts on it? Hey, if I can make a comment, I haven't had one hundred one in a while. But I'm looking in my class, and it's really viscous. It's got some good legs to it, and I had not noticed that before. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that um, that aging uh, in those wood-clad rick houses, especially up in the the upper floors, really get a lot of oak interaction um, from the heat of the summer, and it shows. So, uh, you know, you you tend to have a mix of of barrels uh, from all throughout the rick house, but if they hit those upper floors, especially, there's a lot of lot of oak interaction there, and that that contributes to that consistency and color too. Which will actually be a good segue into the next one as we talk about uh, rick house floors. Everybody ready to move on to rare breed? Let's do it. All right, rare breed, she's coming. Huge jump, huge jump in complexity there. Uh, DJ, one of the in in a lot of the zooms I've been on with you, I've always kind of took this uh, took this and how you described kind of the kind of the nuances between the two. Um, you'd always, I remember you always say rare breed is like one hundred and one kicked up to ten. Yeah, it's like a uh, run one on steroids, you know. Yeah. Um, you, you have that same core profile that we were just working on with 101, but everything is dialed up. Mm -hmm. So the nose, the palate, the finish, the finish is longer. The palate is, is oilier and the nose is stronger. Um, and what's interesting about rare breeds. So we talked about wild Turkey 101 being six and a half to eight years. And sometimes they batch other like older barrels in there. That they just need to do something with. But for the most, you're looking at six and a half, eight years for Wild Turkey 101. With Rare Breed, you have a combination of six, eight, and 12 year. And they don't disclose the percentage of that blend because it's proprietary. But it's always six year, eight year, and 12 year. And there's a lot more 12 year in it than people think there is. At least that's what the Russells have told me. Um, the reason why it doesn't come across as like super oaky is because those 12 year barrels are on the lower floors, the eight year barrels are on the middle floors and the six year whiskeys on the top floors. So that's, that's their, that's how rare breed stays consistent. I don't know if y'all ever noticed this, but like I've noticed fluctuations in 101, but rare breed, when it comes to like a specific batch, like in this case, they've been on 116.8 for years now. If you buy a bottle of rare breed from like this year and a bottle of rare breed from like two years ago, they're very, very close. It's a very consistent bourbon. And it's because of that of way of combining the six, eight, and 12 years from the top, middle, and bottom floors. Um, and that's how they're able to kind of keep that, that profile the way it is. I have a lot of questions sometimes from people asking, how are they able to keep it 116.8 proof and be barrel proof? So it's barrel proof and it's always 116.8 and has been since 2016. How do they do that? Did they make one big giant batch and then dump it at once? Or are they just like crap shooting and keep adding barrels until they reach the proof? The way they can do that is there's a ruling uh, that the ATF had. It's ruling 79-9 if you want to look it up. But it basically says that if you call a bourbon barrel proof, that it can be within two points of the actual barrel proof. Uh, so you can bottle it. Like, for example, as long as the batch is 118.8, no more than 118.8, 
they can call a barrel proof at 116.8 and add to two points worth of water or 1% ABV. So you're allowed 1% of alcohol, uh, ABV kind of variation there uh, to, to still call it barrel proof. A lot of people don't know that. So you can call a whiskey barrel proof and it can have some water in it, but it has to be no more than 1% of a change in your ABV. So that's how wild turkey. So, so they'll do a batch and as long as they get it above 116.8, but no more than 118.8, they can dial it back to the 116.8 and still call it barrel proof. That's how they can keep the same skew on it. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it keeps the same proof. Um, right, right. and, and the it's same thing with Russell's 13, Russell's 13 is like 114.8, like every time, um, and they've done three different batches of it now. And so I'm sure the first one was probably right on the money one, th one, you know, 14.8 or whatever. And then they, the other two, they may have had to add a little bit of water. Nobody complains though. I mean, it's 1%, you know, it's like, is that going to make the biggest difference in the world? Probably not. <laughs> my favorite thing about rare breed is that uh it's more brown sugar forward um whereas like the wild turkey 101 was more vanilla forward it's darker with rare breeds so you get a little more of a brown sugar so you got the same notes in here vanilla caramel the orange peel the cinnamon uh the honey all all the notes that we had talked about in 101 they're in rare breed they're just they're just different so the vanilla is more of a vanilla bean and the caramel is more of a you know like a caramel chew um, the honey is a little bit more like a singed honey. The citrus is, is darker in tone. Like instead of like an orange, you might get like a blood orange. Um, you can, sometimes depending on uh, you know, the mood of the day or whatever, you know, you can find other things like some people get cherry on rare breed. Some people get cola on yeah. rare breed. Um, it, it, sometimes that just depends on the day, like what you've eaten that day and how your mood and all that kind of stuff. Cause I don't know if y'all have ever done this. Have you ever had like a whiskey and then had it again? You're like, wow, this is different than, and that happens oh. a lot, you know? Yeah. You know, it's funny you a little cherry. Cause I, I got all the, the one Oh one and a little cherry just came out on that second sip. Yeah. Not much, yeah, but man, that's good. Yeah. You can yeah, get I can, that. I can taste like, it too. Sometimes I get like clove and rare breed, like in the finish. And, you know, as it's dialing, like as it's fading out, I get cola and clove, sometimes licorice and sassafras on, on those, <clears throat> those spicy kind of like earthy kind of can old fashioned candy spice, whorehound, all that kind of stuff. You get that on the finish sometimes. Where is it going to go with the cigar right now? <laughs> yeah. Rare breed, rare breed does very well with cigars. Um, uh, it better than some of the other expressions for sure. This is an H. Upman, A.J. Fernandez. Okay, it's, yeah. <clears throat> Good stuff. I had me a, um, an Alec Bradley Tempest Natural this morning because that's my favorite cigar. It's I know it sounds like, what, Alec Bradley? Like, yeah, I mean, I love the Tempest Natural. Um, I've talked with Alec about it before. Um, his they're, dad, they're, Alan, created that cigar, and that's, his, that's Alan's favorite. And I can see why. I just, I think it's just a damn solid it's not super complex or crazy, but it's very, very good cigar. I'm jealous. <laughs> we forget that you, Matt. You're talking about talking about 101. Just forgetting, forgetting how good, it, you know, how good and appreciating the whiskey. I've, I, I, it's been a while since I did the same thing with Rare Breed. It's just at we're we're tasting these two whiskeys, and we might hit 70 bucks. Yeah. You know, combined together. Yeah, rare breed. Uh, some people find it real cheap. I've seen people still finding it for around fifty bucks, which is a steal. Like that's half the price of Booker's. And it's forty-five here at Total Wine. God, I mean, what a that's a that is a steal. I mean, for for six to twelve year Kentucky straight whiskey barrel proof from a heritage distillery. I don't know. I don't know how much longer that deal is going to last. Honestly, not not with the way things are lately. Um, that's crazy. It's. Uh, I think I. I think I. I talked in our Discord before, uh, David, on the uh, rare breed rye, but it is. It's sitting in our Costco, the rare breed rye for forty five dollars. Yeah, I remember when it's rare breed rye first came out. Like <laughs> it was scooping it up and paying secondary and all this. Was like now, you know, it, it's everywhere people and 
We'll get to that one, but that one's a deal too, you know. Which Costco? Uh, the one, the one of um, the one by Bell Tower. Fort Myers. That's probably where I got it last time, right? You know, because I just pulled yeah. it out. Um, Can y'all sell alcohol in your Costco, like in Georgia and South Carolina? You can't sell it like you have to have it. You can have it in the same building, but it has to be separated like by right. walls. It's so the, liquor, the liquor is separated. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's because you're not allowed to charge memberships to sell alcohol in those states. So you have to be right. a member to buy in Costco. No. To buy liquor. No. In no. Costco, yes. In some in Costco, states. Costco, yes. Yes. In Florida, I know you do because I tried before and I had to buy a membership while I was there. Okay. So, yeah. you know. it's South, we were, South Carolina, we Georgia, you don't. had to be. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But they actually have a big sign on the one in Augusta, Georgia that says like no membership required on the on the liquor portion. Um it's, laws. it's against the law, yeah, to to have a membership charge for for booze. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting you're from that North Augusta area. I'm, a, I'm yeah. from the Rome. I'm from Rome uh, area. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Originally. Um, uh, last thoughts on rare breed from the gallery. It was good. It was good. It was good. I, I like the 101 personally. It's really solid. You know, if you water rare breed down to 101 proof, it gets really, really close to 101. I mean, it's. The, bo the bones are essentially the same. Did you say uh, the? Did you announce the mash bill on the rare breed, David? I might have missed. It's that. the same. Uh, Wild Turkey same. only has one bourbon mash bill. Okay. It's seventy-five, uh, thirteen, twelve. So seventy-five that. corn, thirteen rye, twelve malted barley, and they only have one bourbon recipe and only one rye recipe. Oh. Yep. Interesting. Yep. It wasn't always that way. Um, that was. That's been since. 71 or so um prior to that uh it was an ndp it was a wholesale grocers house brand and uh they would just source the whiskey from wherever they could a lot of it came from the rippy distillery which was using this mash bill mm -hmm. for jts brown and, and other things um at the time before that was back when jts brown wasn't owned by heaven hill um but uh yeah the 75 13 12 has been around uh, since Austin Nichols acquired the distillery and then, uh, but, but they, but before then there was old Boone in it. There was old Joe in it. There was who knows what, I mean, they would get barrels from brokers as needed. Um, so, uh, yeah, but it's been that same recipe since Austin Nichols acquired the distillery then. All right. Are we ready to move on to 101 drive? Yep. Let's do it. Let's head that way. The bartender's secret. <laughs> what I always get with, with 101 rye is lemon squares. When I'm nosing it, like uh, little lemon squares, bakery kind of things. I always get lemon squares and I get Sprite a lot, like lemon lime soda. Yep. Oh. I've gotten this with the um, with Wild Turkey 101 rye, and then uh, especially especially the especially the uh, the Russell single barrel rye. I've always uh, always thought that it was it was like a uh, if a if a if a, if a, if a herbal tea was a whiskey. Yeah. Um, kind of kind of what I've always yep. gotten with that. There there is definitely herbal tea notes in 101 rye, as well as um, mint. Yeah, uh, there's mint. usually some mint there. Um, lemongrass, um, white pepper, um, you know, I get sugar cookie sometimes on the palate. Um, just depends. Yep. Um, and, and ginger, like, uh, more like a ginger ale type of ginger, not necessarily like a sweet ginger. It is definitely sweet ginger, mm -hmm. sweet citrus, little honey on the back. Definitely citrus, bright citrus, you know, mm -hmm. uh, tangerine. Lemon, lemon peel, lemon oil, that type of thing. Hey, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, do you guys normally drink rye uh, like straight? I normally drink it in a cocktail or like a Manhattan because it goes good in a Manhattan. But I, I don't drink it too much, just straight or on the rocks. How about, how about everybody else? 
Um, I love it straight. Yeah, me personally, my, me and my wife, that we are very much rye forward when we're drinking neat every night. I probably have 300 plus bottles of rye open. Uh, and the, the, the nuances on rye to, you know, man, just all over the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, from this very citrus to dark fruit, light fruit, you know, there's, there's so many different ways rye can go. Mm -hmm. You know, this is super bright citrus. Like yeah, citrus, uh, I, you know, I agree. I, to, I do, I do need, I don't, don't want to jump in because I know other people like, want to give their uh you know uh thoughts on that but but just to mention real quick is that i do like your point um about how rise like can have these crazy profiles all over the place like bourbon for the most i mean in the in the world of spirits right so you have something like scotch which is like you can have something really malty something really whiny you can have something mm -hmm. really peaty um something really earthy is like something sweet something savory scotch is all over the map you know it's just huge profile variation um bourbon is really you know kind of really centered in vanilla caramel like i mean it's like any bourbon you taste is gonna have vanilla caramel in it like that's like the main flavor um rye is like you can it can be really, I've had sweet rise, I've had savory rise, I've had hot rise and, and, and mellow rise and rise that are floral and rise that are fruity and rise that tastes like bourbon and rise. I've even had rise that kind of tastes like kind of scotch. Sometimes it's like really strange. Like it, it, yeah. it's really odd kind of things with rye. So anyway, but I don't, I don't want to take everybody's time, but, but I agree with you. Rye has a, a, a very, very wide range of flavor. Now I'm with you, Charles. I love rye in a old fashioned or in a Manhattan, yeah. but uh, some of them straight. This one's really interesting, though. though yeah, this though, one is very this good. Citrus. I don't know that I've ever tasted citrus or lemon in a in a rye like I do in this. Yeah, one. I've never had uh, a rare bead rye straight. I just had it in Manhattan and things, but boy, this is really good. I'm enjoying this. Man, I gotta get for to the it. for the longest time. Um, for the longest time too and uh dj correct me if i'm if i'm wrong but yeah the the 101 rye has not been available all across the country for for a long time um and for the longest time it was only available in a liter bottle um you know just in the more recent years it's been kind of mass produced and brought out to here just because wild turkey didn't necessarily have the stocks right um and that's the, true i think i I think I, I think I showed you DJ, but like for for a brief amount of time before they changed before they changed uh, labels uh, to this uh, embossed label that they have now, they you know they had the they had the previous with a it was almost like a tear label had the uh, mm -hmm. had the turkey kind of you know kind of imprinted on it, but they briefly made a 750 of that bottle so they could get that so they can get that bottle shape out um, mm -hmm. for that rice so they can make way for the other stuff. And I told yep. DJ, I said, I, I found one and I kept it. I'm not opening it because I, <laughs> there's not that, there's not that many of them no. <laughs> of, of just the NS750. Yeah, there, there really isn't. So the deal with the rye, I mean, we're talking about uh, them, you know, if you go back in the past and I'm not talking about far past, I'm talking about like, you know, probably going back to like, 2012 ish or so and earlier um they were only distilling rye two days a year so yeah. that's not a lot at all um so there really just wasn't a lot of it and when um rye got that resurgence which happened kind of it, it tailed you know suburban kind of really hit that you know, resurging around 20, uh, 2008 or so, like Mad Men, Justified, these things were coming out. Bourbon started kind of getting real popular. And then rye was the next to, to fall behind it um, because rye was so popular with bartenders because y'all right, rye makes a killer cocktail. And, and I would go so far as to say rye more often than not makes a better cocktail than bourbon does because bourbon gets, it's sweet by nature. So if you put it into a sweet cocktail, it just gets covered up um whereas like rye will 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 stick out it has a vibrancy to it it has um, a spice 
Exactly. So it works a lot better in a cocktail because, you know, if you think about it, almost every cocktail is a version of sweet and sour. Like you have a sweet element and you have a sour element. Usually like a daiquiri is a sweet and sour and old fashions a sweet and sour. Manhattan's a sweet. They're all versions of sweet and sour. So, um, you know, it, it, it just has this spice that kicks through this vibrancy that, that, that keeps the drink lively. Um, I mean, you may not want it in every cocktail, but more often than not, it works really, really well. Matter of fact, when I make an old fashioned, I, my signature house old fashioned is half wild turkey 101 and half wild turkey 101 rye so you do you know like two ounces you would do an ounce of 101 and an ounce of 101 rye and you just try it out it works really really yeah. well i'm just talking a standard old-fashioned you know your simple your ice your water your um angostura and then just do a, a shot of each and i promise you, you'll love it um throw an orange peel in there uh it's good to go um but uh so the rye is, is 52% rye. So it's a low, it's a barely legal, you know, Kentucky rye. Um, and so that's why it, it has a little bit like, uh, someone had mentioned that, you know, they really enjoyed it as a, a neat sipper tonight. And it's probably because it's, it's closer to bourbon than, you know, like a 95, five or something like that, where it's like really, really, you know, pungent and, um, got a lot of dill and that kind of thing. One one rye doesn't have that. You might get some mint, you get a lot of citrus and stuff like that, but, uh, it, it's cl closer to a bourbon recipe than, than a lot of other ryes. It's an easy stepper. I mean, it's, it's it just really enjoyable. It is, but, but to answer Eric's question to ask about it being discontinued. So what happened was they, they didn't have a lot of stocks. And so when the that rye revolution kind of like resurgence or whatever kicked in all the bartenders were like grabbing all the rye they could wild turkey just did not have enough to go around so they discontinued 101 rye and they created an 81 proof rye uh and you you may have seen that out and about for a while there that was pretty much the only rye you could find for a long time uh they did back in when 2012 2013 ish they started bottling 101 rye again but it was only in liter bottles because that's what bars use they don't typically don't use 750s unless it's high-end back bar stuff but like you know your workhorse bottles are always liters so um they made uh 101 in liter bottles it wasn't until recently that they even went back to the 750s like eric was, talk eric was talking about like it was for years it was in just the liter bottles and then they went to 750s what about two years ago, Eric, something like that. They finally, yep. a year, a year and a half ago, something like that. They, they, they put it in seven fifties. Right around, it was right around like mid COVID. Yeah. Know, that yeah. Thing. yeah. That was like around the first time I saw it was sometime around COVID. I saw a seven fifty at the store and I was like, Oh, that's cool. I'm, and it was the embossed Turkey, like you were talking about. Um, but, uh, the rye is aged about four to six years. Um, well, the one one rye is about four to six years. Which sounds young, but you guys are familiar with whiskey enough to know that that's not that bad for rye, actually. Like four to six years is a very serviceable rye, like has a lot of, uh, you know, character to it. Uh, it's not, you know, particularly mature, but, but sometimes, you know, a mature rye isn't, that's really not what you need in a cocktail. And that's what 101 rye is made for. 101 rye is made for bartenders, really. Um, and uh, so you want to have some vibrant notes in there. Um, at the same time, you don't want it to taste youthful. And I think they've, they've dialed that in really well. So it doesn't taste like overly young, um, but it doesn't have a lot of oak to it either. So it's a really nice, uh, cocktail rye, but you can, it's good enough where you can sip it, uh, as a neat sipper. Cause it has that, that sweetness to it. Those, those confectionery notes, like the lemon squares and the icing, like it's got like lemon frosting and stuff like that to it. Price point, uh, price points usually just around thirty bucks, like right at yep. right at thirty. Yeah, just a little bit more expensive than one hundred and one bourbon, and it's only because they just don't have as much of it, um, so it's a little more scarce. So they have a little higher price. Gotcha. Well, if there's uh, if there's nothing else from everybody, you want to move on to rare breed rye? Yep, rare breed rye to me, it's kind of the dark horse of wild turkey. Like it's not appreciated like it probably should be. Um, and 
what's funny is if you watch YouTube videos enough, it always does really well in blinds for some reason. Like I think a lot of people, like I've seen it beat like, will it rise? Um, I've seen it beat like, um, you know, Knob Creek and, and, and other well-known uh, rise from heritage distilleries because it just has this nice uh, uh, complexity to it. It's, it's a blend of four, six and eight year rye whiskey and bottled at barrel strength. In my, in my opinion, um, I've, I've had, I, between, between the Russell's lineup of bourbon and the regular wild turkey lineup of bourbon, um, there's some, there's some subtle nuances of, you know, the differences between the two. Obviously the, the Russell's lineup for bourbon is a little more, like I said, a little more refined, I guess you could right. call it. Um, between between the Russell's rise, the Wild Turkey 101 rise, and even even uh, matching up with Cornerstone, Rare Breed is just Rare Breed rise is just in another like it's a whole different profile. P- per- personally, I thought it I thought it had its tasting notes are just kind of off the charts away from what they what kind of that Ru- that Russell Single Bell rye, even even Cornerstone. It's just it's just a whole another. A whole nother whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. The, yep. the, the rare breed rye, if I go back to like, like, an, like an analogy I used back in my review, if I recall correctly, first time I reviewed it was like, it's the kind of rye that like, isn't very polite. Um, it's not subtle. It's, it's like, you know, your college roommate that just kicks in the door, comes in, opens the fridge, takes one of your beers props his muddy boots up on your coffee table and like there's nothing you can do about it it's just like that's just how it is <laughs> that's that's what rare breed rye is it's very brash it's very old um it's got a good good bit of pepper and spice to it um it's uh very unapologetic poly, unapologetically uh bold um i remember i remember when i first tried it it was a uh... All I could think of was like mango habanero was kind mm-hmm. of the kind that's of that's a good that's a good note it. actually that 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 really I like that Eric that's I get that yeah that that's that makes total sense to me getting yeah, some can like a canned peaches note mm-hmm. that, a little bit of sweet peach peach flavor yeah like fruit cocktail with the with the yeah. your peaches exactly. and pears out and of, a little cherry in there yeah yeah. yeah. It was just a little heat on the back of it. I mean, it is, yeah. Yep. It's got a lot of little, it's got a lot of, a lot of white pepper on the finish. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not like a black pepper. It's not a bitter pepper, but there's a good bit of pepper on the finish, but it's like a really strong white pepper. And I I, I guess you could call it black pepper. It's just sometimes that misleads people to think it's bitter. It's not, but it, it definitely has pepper on the finish. I, I think it's hard to find. I've only I've stumbled across it once, but I don't know what everybody else thinks. But yeah, I, I haven't I haven't one. seen this one down here in Naples. Really, it's sitting at Total Wine. I thought. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. It, it, I went to Total Wine. <laughs> which is, hey, there was it, one bottle sitting on the shelf, and so I bought it. It, it is like I said, it's the dark horse. A lot of people pass it by, and they don't realize what they're passing by. Yeah, it's sitting up here at the Costco for forty five bucks. Yeah, wow. it's a steal. <laughs> like I, 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 I literally saw probably because when I when I was picking everything up, I saw the total wine. It was sixty six, I think sixty five, and uh, and I'm, that's that's retail. But I was like, I wonder if it's still at Costco. I remember seeing it a couple of years ago. There there was probably fifteen cases, like <laughs> at forty five dollars. Just I'm gonna there. have to join Costco. Yeah, I, I need to I need to dump Sam's and get Costco. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a good yeah. price. Yeah, if you all need some, we'll we'll go get it. Yeah, I need a, I need a restash. I think I only got about a. I'll go as a guest. <laughs> yeah. I hope nobody finds out. We kept talking how good it is, and uh, I think it's actually a good thing that uh, the rare breed <laughs> and the rare breed rye, especially, are like phenomenal, and nobody ever brings them up. And I'm like, good. <laughs> Stop <laughs> bringing it up. To people. You know what? And I would never. <laughs> I would. I would never tell Campari this. Okay. But I, I do think that, so I don't know how, how long y'all been in whiskey, but if you remember in 2015 when Beam announced that 
Booker's was going to go from 50 to a hundred dollars and oh. everybody lost their minds. Like people, like there was that whole like hashtag fuck beam kind of thing going on. And like, it was like, people were like done with beam. And then they kind of backtracked and said, well, well, well we're going to, we're going to raise the price slowly, like $10 a year. Right. And everybody was like, well, by the time it gets to a hundred dollars, nobody's ever going to touch it. I can't even find bookers anymore. Like, Booker's is now an allocated item, okay? So if Campari charged $100 for every people would lose their minds. And then it would be allocated and like sell out everywhere. You'd They'd never buy find it, it anyway. Yeah. I would I never know. <laughs> Campari that. But that's what would happen is like people like it's such a deal that people just kind of like, oh, yeah, that's rare breed. Like they just it's almost like they put it in the back head. Like it'll always be there. It's 50 bucks. You know, I can get it anytime. Why do I need to go chase it? I can, I'm, I've got other stuff I need to be chasing. Yeah. I can always get another bottle of rare breed. The second rare breed turns into something like Booker's, it's over with. Like, you know, and it, it, if they were brave enough to do it, it would be crazy and people would be pissed. But then, like a, a year or two later, it would be like Booker's would be allocated. Um, thank goodness that, that hasn't happened. And like I said, I'm not saying a damn word about it. <laughs> But it is, such a steal. it is such a steal. That's, I, I remember I remember when all that happened and just uh, being being a Booker's fan and, and being 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 my you know second love to Wild Turkey. I was and I've, I've you know some of the people I've talked to on here I've complained about it. It's just I you know I, I, I think it was I think it was underpriced at fifty, but I I. Uh, I have a rule. I have a set of rules where it's like I'm I'm comparing uh, I'm comparing age to proof to price to like you know what's my bank for my buck like I'm a you know I'm I'm a big I look for the knee knockers that nobody talks about and I, I said I refuse to pay 115 bucks for a six year old castrating bourbon I just yeah. I'm I'm at that point and I love Booker's to death but like I can still go get a nine year Knob Creek yep for 120 proof at 60 bucks like to yep, me yep. That, that that shows the like I'm not, I'm not buying, you know, unless, unless I yeah. trade even yeah. square on a, on, unless I trade even square for a Booker's when it comes to that, I'm not buying one. I'll say, Hey, you want a Booker's? <laughs> I'm leaving it for you to come get, yep. you know. <laughs> yep. So you, you guys can't see the other half of the bar, right? But I'm probably, I, I, I arguably am one of the biggest Booker's fans, arguably in Florida. I have been going back all the way to 83 and I've got, probably cases of every batch because I just I'm I'm a I'm a Jim Bean fanboy. I know Freddie No. I know I know all those guys. I've got them all. Um and I, I gotta say when they went to hundred it was hard, but it is still one of the best bourbons on the damn market. And I'm a huge Knob Creek guy. I think it's pound for pound. I, I think it's Knob Creek, Wild Turkey 101, and then probably Jim Bean Black, like in that order. But I've got every Knob Creek ever or, or every Booker's ever and uh God damn, it's still so good at a hundred bucks. I don't care. I'll still buy it. I but that's just I got, me. Maybe I'm dumb. Fair, fair <laughs> I, got enough, a, fair I got a question for you. So sure. when they changed the batches to be represented by the new labels. sketch and uh, yeah. yeah, like so I'll tell you my personal favorite, but you got to tell sure. me your personal favorite first. Which sure. one's your Which one's your favorite? So my favorite new label batch is Blue Nights. Okay. It's probably my favorite they've made. It's amazing. Although I will say Kentucky Tea and Charlie's batch, the newest, which you, you can't I haven't see inside of yeah. my bar. It's fucking fantastic. Like yeah. and I say that in a way that like I've had every Booker's since the since seventy nine. I literally know Charlie who who worked at the distillery with Booker's got the first batch before they started selling it. I've had them all. Yeah, because it wasn't even a commercial yeah. product for a while. It like, he was just no. making it for his friends. He made it for his friends. Those in his hands were his thing, yeah. right? And yeah. I met Freddie. I met Freddie. No, I met them all. Right? I met Fred and Fred. No. Yeah. Um, I, I'm telling you, Blue Nights is amazing. But Kentucky Tea since 2018, I would argue Kentucky Tea. And um, Charlie's batch are are phenomenal. Buy as many as you can. Like I can't get enough of them. They're amazing. Yeah, no secret is my favorite. So no secret's fantastic. I got a couple of those over here. Yeah, um, I, I, I've got them all though. I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a Booker's whore. So yeah. no no <laughs> secret I, I, to I, me. I got a ton of them. <laughs> no secret was the first one to me that like actually those got like good. a like a dark fruit note in it. Like a like a. Fair. black cherry blackberry type of i was like wow this is different for bookers like i've never gotten like this dark fruit note in there before and like i end up buying though. like 
I bought three no secrets and I'm down to like my last one. And it's got like, I don't know, maybe a third of a bottle yeah. left. Again, you can't see this, but like the 87 is fantastic. Um, oh yeah. All no the, hard the times. Old Shiny ones, Barrel yeah. is great. Yeah. I've got a bunch of the original. They're, they're fantastic. Um, I've given Sean a couple samples. So he's had a couple of the old guys, um, but I've got, I've got them all here again, going back to 83 and, uh, man off your rockers fantastic so th there's a there's a bunch of the the new labels that are good but i'm telling you uh, uh david you gotta try charlie's batch okay and kentucky tea are are the are the truest to old label original booker no bookers i've had in a long time and i've compared them to some of the 80s and 90s batches and it's really hard to pick them apart and i do it a lot yeah okay well cool well i'll have to I'll have to see if i can find some of those to to give it a because like it's tip it's difficult with bookers because like it used to be everywhere yeah and i've, I've got a, i've got a couple of the old white box you know the Ooh, lighter yeah, wood boxes i've yeah. got a few 2014s yeah. yep in, uh in in my bunker fantastic bottle by the way 2014 2015 good bottles yeah yeah so that's cool though but yeah see so if 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 campari took that leap and they did the hundred dollar rare breed thing especially if they swapped it all like ncf because you have That'd a travel upset. retail NCF yeah. rare breed. If they like repackaged it and were like, okay, we're going to do the hundred dollar bookers thing. People would bitch and then like they would pay for it and it would be allocated. When people ask me what, what favorite, you know, they, you know, the starters are the rare breed 101, the Jimmy black, which I, I think is a fantastic bourbon. Um, and then the knob creeks, but they're like, what's over like 50 bucks. You like, rare breed, uh, rare breed is my, is my like go-to and Kentucky spirit or like, right there or like yep. I, if you're gonna spend over 50 bucks like price per value for taste and experience those are pretty hard to beat i would that you yep. can find relatively easily mm -hmm. yep yeah. speaking of kentucky spirit i love kentucky we're spirit. not there yet are we oh are we god this is going okay. close okay we're getting there well all right bottom line is if you haven't had rare breed rye it's easy to find in my area at least and it's not that expensive so by all means grab it I'm doing the rare breed barrel proof rye. It's fantastic. Ooh. Fantastic. Love the stuff. Um, so if it, anything else from the gallery, we're going to move on to Kentucky spirit. Um, admittedly as admittedly as a wild turkey fan, this is one of my most critiqued, uh, critiqued whiskeys out of the, out of the turkey lineup. Um, just I've I put it I put it in blinds a few times with just regular 101 um, and re reportedly it's usually right at eight years old. The, it's a single barrel, obviously, so um, it's they usually uh, try to keep it right at eight. I know some Misano's picks have been a little higher, um, but about about eight years old is the is the age. Um, I've always described it as you know. If Wild Turkey 101 had a tuxedo, um, it's a it's a little bit more refined. A little kind of some of the edges have been kind of taken off a little bit. Um, but as much as much shit as I've talked about this whiskey, um, where I would just prefer the regular 101 to it, this still kicks Blanton's ass 30 times. Oh yeah, yeah. It's interesting you bring up Blanton's because that's where Kentucky Spirit started. So you know, uh, Ancient Age came out with Blanton's. And, you know, it had this fancy bottle with handwritten uh, barrel details and a mm -hmm. pewter horse that went on top, right? Well, when they came out with Kentucky Spirit in 94, they chose this ornate bottle, this unique ornate glass, like a, a turkey fantail. Right. Um, they don't use that anymore. Um, but that was, that was one of the things. They had handwritten barrel details on the neck, a la Blanton's. Uh, and then they had a pewter top on the original Kentucky spirit had a pewter collectible top. So it was, it was made to compete directly with Blanton's single barrel bourbon, you know, with the barrel details, this ornate glass and a handwritten label. So just perfectly made to like knock off Blanton's. Do you, um, do you know why they stopped using that ornate uh, turkey, uh, turkey yeah. bottle? Just it is so money. beautiful. Money. <laughs> I mean, Funny. It, it was, it's a, it was a custom mold that they had to have made in Asia. 
and it was real expensive uh, comparatively to the bottles that they were using for rare breed. And somebody in Campari realized that if they just upped the order for the rear breed glass to use for Kentucky Spirit, that bottle would go down even more, which was already a lot cheaper than the fantail glass. And the irony is they did that and then they raised the price of Kentucky Spirit. So the profit margin on Kentucky Spirit is ridiculous. Um, Kentucky Spirit costs more than Russell's Reserve single barrel. Not joking. So um it's it's funny because like when they went from that ornate glass to this you know yeah just the rare breed bottle which is i wish i, mean, I had saved one of those or those uh, fantail fantails yeah yeah and then the fantail had a few different iterations mm -hmm. like i mean you had the pewter top and then you went to the wood cork the dark wood cork the light wood cork the the color label the monochrome label um you know there were different variations of that but the glass always stayed the same um, and, and the only other expression that it was used for was wild turkey tribute export. So tribute came out in 2005. Uh, it was a tribute to Jimmy's 50th. Uh, I'm sorry, 2004. It was a tribute to uh, uh, Jimmy's 50th year at wild turkey. And uh, well, 2004 was his anniversary. It may not have hit the market until 2005, but somewhere around there. And Tribute came in a bottle that's similar to uh, Russell's Reserve in the U.S., but in Japan, it was in the Fantail glass for their version, and it was a little bit higher proof. It was 110, and it was 101 in America. Um, but those are the only two expressions that that Fantail glass has, has ever been used for was Kentucky Spirit and uh, the Export Tribute. But one thing I love about this... so. I mean, you can just take the 101 and nose it against the Kentucky Spirit, and the Kentucky Spirit is has a a has a smoother texture to it. It's rounded, you know. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have that six and a half year whiskey in it that that the the 101 does. They have a lot of similarities. Um, of course, Kentucky Spirit is a single barrel, so it all depends on the barrel as to the flavor profile. Um, and since Wild Turkey uses traditional wood clad rick houses each rick house kind of has its own dna and so the the whiskey can really vary Good. from rick house to rick house and campus to campus they have three aging campuses they have tyrone which is you know the main campus where the distillery is you have mcbrayer which is right across the street from four roses um on bonds mill road uh if you're if you ever go visit four roses and you look across the street and you see those rick houses in the woods that look like really old and worn down those are owned by wild turkey uh, and then they own uh, Camp Nelson, which used to be uh, Canada Dry Bourbon, uh, which for a period of time there was Stitzel Weller. Um, and so all that was aged there. And Wild Turkey bought those in the late 90s. And uh, they've been using those ever since. And there are used to be six. Now there's only five Rick Houses at Camp Nelson. Used to be five Rick Houses at McBrayer. Now there's only three. Uh, and then Tyrone lost one to a fire. Uh, they took one and turned it to a cistern room. Um, but there's all the way to Z in Tyrone. So you have A to Z with the exception of there is no J, um, there is no I, and there is no L. Um, and then uh, with Camp Nelson, you have A, B. There's no longer a C. You have D, E, and F. Um, and then at McBrayer, you just have A, B, and C. So it could come from any of those. And it will tell you on the bottle. The bad thing is, is they often don't put the campus. So like if it says A, that could yeah. be Tyrone, Camp Nelson, or McBrayer. You just kind of have to know your shit. And it's like, you know, if you get involved deep enough with with groups like like mine on Discord, like Eric's familiar with, we, we've like nerded out completely. And like we're able to figure out which campus it is just because we're familiar with barrel numbers. Um but sometimes they'll be nice and they'll put it. And it all depends on the rep. I mean, I hate that, that, that their system works that way. But it really boils down to how the rep puts it into the system. So sometimes they'll say CNA. Um, but more often than not, it'll just say like A. This one is uh, Tyrone K. That makes complete sense. You have a it, first it had a, I had a Tyrone profile. I just wasn't sure which. Do you have a personal favorite? Hmm. Well, that's different. Um, okay, so it's it's a good question. 
it really depends on the year. So like each each year, different rickhouses are in season, and they and they fluctuate in time. So like a rickhouse B, Tyrone B barrel from 2017 is not going to taste like necessarily a rickhouse B barrel from 2020. Um, and there's all kinds of reasons for that. Mother Nature being the primary one. Um, but right now we're kind of in this weird kind of situation because wild turkey changed out their still. So they had this still they had been using since essentially since pre-prohibition. And that still uh, was taken down in 2010 was the last time they used it. So by 2011, they were no longer using that old still. And they built a brand new facility with a brand new still um, all automated computerized that happened around fall, 2010, spring, 2011, the new still had kicked in and, you know, you can taste a difference. Um, if you drink wild Turkey long enough and you start comparing things, the new still whiskey is different than the old still whiskey. Now, thankfully there's just been this transition period and Bruce and I've talked about this, Bruce Russell and I've talked about this. So by 2013 distillation dates, it really starts tasting more like the old still. Um, but if you look at like the 2011, 2012 distillation dates, they kind of have a really strong nuttiness to them. Um, and, you know, the consensus is that they were working the kinks out of that still there. Matter of fact, some of the first batches that they did off that new still got sold off because Eddie just wasn't happy with them. So they got sold off to different NDPs, um, Jefferson's <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and they went places. Um, but you mean those uh, weren't aging the barrels, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, but now I feel like it's kind of getting back, but there's been other changes too. Like, you know, if you taste dusty wild turkey, they used to use cypress, uh, fermenting uh, tanks. Now they're steel. Um, those, they started changing those out in the nineties. Uh, the barrel entry proof used to be 107. Now it's 115. Uh, they first changed it in 2004 from 107 to 110. And then 2006, they changed it from 110 to 115. So that barrel entry proof is going to make a difference in the, the taste of the whiskey. Um, uh, they're no longer the lowest barrel entry proof in the industry that goes to Michter's at around 103 or 104. Um, and maker's mark still is 111. Um, but 115 is still pretty low comparatively because beam is 125, Heaven Hills 125, um, and a lot of your other smaller distilleries, they can vary anywhere from from 105 to 125. But 115 is pretty pretty low for heritage distillery. DJ, you said something, you said that was interesting there, and it kind of made me do a little math here. Um the rare breed expression that came out that was 112 proof. It was that kind of weird looking. 112. It wasn't out. Yeah, it wasn't out for long. Right. Um, and you you given the you given the time frame of when that still was changed would have been about the time Things that had some six year that yeah. had some six year whiskey in it. And I was right, right. It didn't last. It didn't last for long at that proof. And I was wondering if that had anything to do with that changing. Uh, what, I, just, I did not I did not like that batch at all um, and I don't think Eddie was a big fan of it either um, it didn't last long 112.8 it was it was there it only it was only around for about two years um, and yeah there it is now now and Eric in all honesty there's 116.8 in that label as well right the, the very first 116.8 batches were in that label um, and they taste like the one sixteen point eight that we have now, essentially. But uh, the one twelve point eight to me was just real, like had a lot of cereal grain to it. Um, mm -hmm. I just didn't didn't like that batch very much at all. It was real thin, and but a lot of people like it. They're like, oh, this is dusty turkey. I'm like, I don't know if I'd call it that, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, whatever floats your boat, guys. But uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, that 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 didn't last long. But as far as going back to Kentucky Spirit. A couple things. Uh, it is usually eight to 10 years. Um, a lot of times uh, the private barrels that are in the private barrel program are bottled as Kentucky Spirit. 
Uh, it's usually by choice. So like you can say, well, I want it to be Kentucky Spirit. I want it to be Russell Reserve. Most people choose Russell Reserve single barrel because it's not chill filter at 110. But like, for example, these two uh, Kentucky Spirits that I have here that we we recently had from my, my Patreon, I had no choice but to bottle these as one uh, one-on-one proof because we had picked them for Russell's Reserve single barrel. But I was notified by the distillery when they were bottling them that they were only 106 proof. Um, so I had no choice, but to convert them to Kentucky spirit, which is actually kind of cool because they're, they're Kentucky spirit, but they're really close to barrel proof. So they're like, you know, only five proof points, two and a half percent ABV right. from barrel proof. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty cool for Kentucky spirit. Um, so you, you got to remember that like people are like, Oh, Kentucky spirit's only one one proof and Russell's one ten. It's like, yeah, but what was the barrel proof? You know? Cause like. There's been plenty of Russell's Reserve picks that are 120 plus proof, or you know, usually they're usually between 115 and 120. But there have been like a lot of those Camp Nelson F's from the sixth floor that that I picked were like 121, 122 proof. So they're having to add water to get it down to 110. So that's 12 proof points. Well, that means this Kentucky it. Spirit is closer to barrel proof than those Russell's picks. You know, right? What was you saying, Sean? The daughter was talking to me. <laughs> no, I mean we we had a we had a we had a Russell's our first Russell's pick that we did for for our society. Um, I want to say it was one fourteen. Yeah. I think was the one with the barefoot we tasted at it, and and that was uh like I said, it was pretty 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 damn close as you can get, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you just have to kind of know, um, you know what. <sighs> You know, if, if when it comes to private selections, you usually have access to a lot more information than you do just like the shelf bottles. But it's always a roll of the dice. You never know. Um, I've had Kentucky Spirits I've bought and been very disappointed. I've had Russell's Reserve single barrels I've bought and been disappointed. Um, and then the opposite. I've had, you know, Kentucky Spirits that are awesome and Russell's Reserve picks that are awesome. It's really kind of roll of the dice. And that that's that's just how it is with wild turkey. I mean they're aging their barrels in traditional rick houses um, in multiple campuses. They have a ton of variation. So you're going to get a different profile. Uh, if you, especially if you buy a barrel that's aged at a different rick house or a different year, you know, um, you're going to have a lot of variation there. Um, kind of like four roses, you know, have a lot of variation because of the recipes there. They use, they use, you know, uh, story rick houses, so their their you know profile differences aren't necessarily because of maturation. It's because of the recipe. And wild turkeys is only because of the location, the aging location, because it's the same mash bill, the same barrel entry proof, same cooperage, always that number four barrel char. You know, it's like it's always the same thing. Um, it's the aging location, the rick house, the campus, the floor, and the age that make the difference. interesting um yeah with going you know just going back to this kentucky kentucky spirit i mean it's with the single barrel products out there like we've like we've said it we've said it a few times it's just i i think i think we have better buys in wild turkey than this however that i'll still put this up against just about any any heritage distillery single barrel product you know as as, as damn good whiskey and you dj one of the things you uh um, for those who haven't read some of his blogs, um, he, if he doesn't necessarily like it compared to other expressions, I think you're nothing short of consistent in saying, I'm saying this is not bad whiskey. It's just compared to other, <laughs> to others right. that I've had. Yeah. The, it's not bad yeah. It, and, and, and that really kind of goes with a lot of your heritage distilleries. Um, you know, it, it just like, you know, we were talking about bookers. Some bookers are better than others. Some Knob Creeks are better than others. Um, and, and then a lot of it, too, is individual. So, you know, your personal preferences really determine what the best whiskey is, not what somebody else's personal preference. I mean, I think we can all agree that, like, you know, something like you know, E.H. Taylor, Bottle and Bond, or, you know, uh, Stag Jr. or Stag, I guess what it's called now, compared to Benchmark. Well, it's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, you know, there there could be right. that one guy in the room that's like, "Well, I prefer Benchmark," and it's like, "Well, okay, 
nice day. Um, <laughs> but for the most, I think we can agree that like stag is going to blow away benchmark, you know. But then when it comes down to right. stag batches, then you're going to say, well, you know, 13 or 14 or whatever, you know, is your favorite, you know, and then you can say, well, one or two sucked or whatever, you know, it's like, well, maybe somebody out there really likes one or two. I don't know. Um, so it's the same thing with, with, with wild turkey and single barrels. Uh, you know, some people are fans of certain Rick houses or certain runs. Like a lot of people like those 2019 bottled, like Camp Nelson runs that were all distilled in 2009. They love that like Camp Nelson F or Camp Nelson A profile um, from that old still. Um, and then you have some people that are just goo goo about, uh, you know, some of the newer stuff that's in like Camp Nelson C or Tyrone S. I mean, you've got like, I know there's a couple people, Eric, you've seen on Discord that like, like if they see an S barrel, they're like, I want it now. Like, you know, I want all the S barrels or I want all the Camp Nelson C barrels I can find, you know. Um, so you do have fanboys of certain you know, Rick houses or certain campuses. Um, and Camp Nelson tends to be way up there, especially for me too. Like even when like, like, you know, when that new still stuff was reaching age uh, for single barrels in 2020 and 2021 uh, wasn't the best runs of wild Turkey that's been out there um, admittedly, but the Camp Nelson stuff held up for some reason, like, when the Tyrone stuff was kind of, yeah, I don't know, you know, it was a little bit nutty and kind of strange on some of them. The Camp Nelson stuff was like always good. So there's just something about that location that really does well. Thankfully, I feel like we're like returning to form here uh, within this last like six to 12 months. And the barrels that I've tasted at Wild Turkey uh, on the last few picks I've been on uh, have just been really awesome like reminds me of what that whiskey was like back in 2017 and 2018 so i think that all those kinks in the new still have been worked out is this is this a uh, just a marketplace like a shelf retail kentucky spirit or is yeah this a... I, I picked I, I picked this up at an abc uh okay. final yeah it's good yeah, it regular... and, k, and k is a, a a pretty popular rick house right that's why when I, when I saw it because i was i was telling i was telling sean when i was looking for it i was like son of a yeah i was, I was trying to find a kentucky spirit and it's total wine didn't total wine didn't have any and i finally found one i was like oh great great it's a k yep. <laughs> so, k's a good one i was pretty excited um yep. uh before before we head into um the drawing for the books just want to kind of gauge the room here um not not what not what you've tasted beforehand, but today, what we gave out as samples, what around the room was everybody's favorite port? That's a hard call, Eric. I mean, yeah. the 101 rye was... I was, was going to say the one same thing. The 101 rye is really amazing. You know, but I'm a huge fan of the... Um, shit, I'm just... Right, no surprise there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the one on one rye was just floral. It just hit me right tonight. It went really good with the cigar I'm smoking. So, all right, Wonderful. that's my that's that's my vote for the for the night. Me too. Awesome. Yeah, I'll say for the for the price, the one on one rye. But uh, overall, I'd say the rare breed rye was probably my favorite. Awesome. Yeah, the rare breed was pretty phenomenal. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. Listen, rare breeds are always, you know, here at my house and open. I don't have a, a one-on-one variety here, so that's probably why it hit me the best tonight because I just haven't had it for so long. What's your address? We'll <laughs> <laughs> be over to Myers. Hey, five five four six Park Road, man. Come on, we'll have a point. <laughs> you know what? What's what I find interesting about, especially when you're picking apart expressions from a single brand is it's it's like getting a um a set of knives and there's just different knives but they're all from the same manufacturer they all have like the same handle you know the same construction quality the same kind of grip and feel and weight but different blades are useful for different things you, know, you might have a steak knife or you might have a peering knife or um you know a fillet knife whatever um 
And that's kind of like what these are. So each one kind of has a different strength and weakness compared to the other ones. So whereas some are better, obviously better for cocktails, some are better for neat sippers, some might be better for just mixing with Coca-Cola. Like, you know, I wouldn't put rare breed rye in a Coke, you know, but I would put 101 in a Coke any day, you know? Um, and so there's just different, uh, applications for all of them with all having kind of a similar DNA in some aspects, um, but useful for different things. And uh, anyway, so it, that's why it's always fun comparing expressions from uh, the same, especially heritage distilleries. So, you know, it's not sourced, you know, it's all coming from the same places. Um, so like beam is another good one to do, you know, comparisons with makers is, although usually you're just kind of either comparing proof points to, or stave finishes, but still it's fun. You know, it's like fun to do the, the makers, the makers cast drink, the 46, the 46 cast drink, the 101, that kind of thing. Really fun. Cause you get that same DNA, but you know, th they're useful for different things. Um, and, and with wild Turkey, it's just a, a really fun brand to be involved in because you have so many different expressions from one bourbon mash bill and one rye mash bill. And the funny thing is they all taste different. Like it's legit. It's not like we're just going to slap a new label on this thing and market it like it's something else. And it's really the same thing. It's like, it really tastes different. Like there is a difference between right. the products. It's not like they're just trying to hog up as much space they can on the shelf. Um, Cause there are brands that do that to some degree, like nothing against heaven Hill, but you know, they do have a, a lot of like bottle and bond expressions. And if you put them in a blind, they are going to be very similar to one another. Um, but uh, I, I just, one thing I, you know, not, nothing negative against Heaven Hill. I actually think it's kind of cool that they've preserved all these old labels instead of letting them die. So, you know, right. having the, the T.W. Samuels and the J.T.S. Brown and, and uh, uh, you know, Melicorn, whatever, you know, they, they've saved all of this history um and, and 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 they bottle it up but you know it's a lot of it's the same mash bill the same age improve that kind of thing um maybe different locations but uh uh yeah so it those those are fun those are fun comparisons to do because you get to figure out what makes it tick you know outside and, of that oh go ahead sorry sean go ahead sean corleon go ahead oh, so I had a question on the, the the 12 year Japanese release. Is there anything particularly different about that? It it has kind of different notes all outside oh, of yeah. having having the years. Where is, is there something in particular that kind of makes it? Kind oh, of the 101 12 year? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so good. Yeah, it, <laughs> it 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 is totally worth it. If you can find it, get it. Because okay, good. Yeah, it's um have you cracked into it? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's minimum of 12 years, but you know, there could be older barrels in there. Um, and there very likely probably is some older barrels in there. Um, to me, that one surprised me because, uh, you know, they had the 13 year for a couple of years there, which was like a 90 proof or 91 proof, you know, whiskey. But when that came out, I was like, okay, they're going to do 101 12 again. That's big shoes to fill because the last time they did 1112 was 2012 and it was killer. And every 1112 prior to that was killer. So I'm like, this is, this is really going to be interesting to see how this turns out. And while it didn't taste like the dusty 1112, it tasted phenomenal. And like I have bought several of those, <laughs> uh, they're just fantastic whiskey. Um, so if you can find the 10112, get it uh there's really not a whole lot of difference from it uh compared to like something like russell's 13 other than the proof so like if you took one like if you took russell's 13 and you added water and got it down to 101 it would probably taste very close to the 10112 i haven't done that yet but but that's what leads me to to believe that there's probably you know some older barrels in that 10112 it just tastes like it has that nice oak profile because uh like the 13 year Japanese export that was around for a while. If you tasted that next to Russell's 10, they had a very similar profile enough to where it wasn't really worth going and getting the 13 year. Um, 
but the 10112 is a different story like it it really tastes like mature whiskey so um yeah that's that's a good one admittedly my favorite whiskey of the night was the one i was talking shit about (laughs) (laughs) it's a good it's a good kentucky spirit it really is um it just it really just depends on the barrel, the barrel in the rig house. Um, sometimes it can come across like just a more re- refined 101, but, but then sometimes it can come across like just a damn good single barrel. But you did say, you know, something about it being better than Blanton's. Um, I will agree with you on that in defense of Blanton's, okay? Um, Blanton's that we drink now is not Blanton's that we used to drink. The Blanton's right. now tastes like a five to six year whiskey. It does not taste like the old Blanton's. Like if you taste the Blanton's from the 2000s, like 2008 or something like that, it's a different Blanton's than we have now. It just, it just is. I, I think agree. it's old. I think Blanton's used to be nine years. Um, I think Blanton's gold still is. I think the gold is like eight to nine years. So they say it's not age dated. Um, but the Blanton's that you get at the store every once in a while when you find it, it's at most at most six years it does not taste anything higher than that at all um so um and 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 a lot of folks got to remember too that blanton's is not owned by buffalo trace a lot of people think that blanton's is is owned by Buffalo. it's not at all blanton's is owned by takara which is a japanese company they control the whole mash bill number two so they own elmer t lee they own ancient age they own rocky hill farms hancock reserve all that stuff so Takara gets to decide what goes in that bottle, not Buffalo Trace. They tell Buffalo Trace what they want to go in that bottle. And so if if they've got to meet demand, if demand is up here for Blanton's and you're down here because you're putting eight-year whiskey in it, the only way to kind of get closer is to start putting younger whiskey in it. And that's what Blanton's tastes like to me now. Blanton tastes like five to six-year whiskey. And it used to taste like if you go to like a bar and in louisville and you get like a dusty blanton this it is not even close it's like it's pretty different now i will like again the blanton's gold to me tastes more mature like i actually like blanton's gold i think blanton's gold is like high quality whiskey um straight from the barrel yeah you know i think rare breeds better than straight from the barrel that's just my personal opinion um but gold is about the only blanton's i actually enjoy now they, um, I've had a, I've had a couple of samples of the, some of the older, expre- uh, older silver, Blanton silver expressions, mm-hmm. and that's some of the best whiskey I've ever had. Yep, yeah. They, they mean, Blanton's gets a, 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 a bad rap sometimes, um, and you know, does it deserve it? I mean, I think sometimes people deserve it. The people that like do stupid stuff for Blanton's, like wait in line for six hours for a stupid bottle of bourbon, it's like okay <laughs> you know whatever man um but uh it it it's it used to be a lot better than it was and it was one of the first bourbons like the first bottle of blanton's I ever bought was a 2009 uh blanton's and i found it on a shelf and like i got home and i poured it and i loved it you know and um too bad you it's could not find it everywhere i mean it was yeah. just everywhere the last time i could find it everywhere was like the 2013 2014 bottles I, that was like about the last time that they were just sitting there. Um, and that was when, just when I was getting into whiskey, you could find Blanton's pretty much anywhere. They had it at Costco. It was like in those bins and it was just like piled up, you know, and like a little wooden bin just full of Blanton's bottles. And now it's, you know, like I said, it just, it's just, it's just young now. It's not what it used to be. And Kentucky well, and Spirit people, is, is people who don't know about bourbon. They'll come into a store and say, Oh, do you have Blanton's? Because right. that's what they've heard. Right. And it's got this cool horse on it. But it's, in my opinion, it's really not that great of a whiskey. No, not now. Would, not now. I wouldn't go out of my way to get Have it. you ever had the gold? The Blanton's no, gold? I have not. Okay. Well, that, I think I did one time. A friend it's of good. Friend. It, it's that they've still kept a decent age on it. It doesn't say the age, but it tastes like it's eight, nine, ten years, something like that. It has a, it has a better taste to it. Um but yeah, it's you. You don't find it now. When you do, it's like hundred plus, and it's just like never mind. That's all right. <laughs> it's a good gift. All right, you can find it. All right. Um, 
towards the end of this uh, tasting here. Let's uh, let's get a little quick uh, quick drawing here. I was going to have my son guest pick, but they have passed out. So, uh, uh. so I'm picking out a bottle. Um, I am not in this, so there is no riggery. Um, so we'll we're do this pick one for, for a, a signed copy of American Spirit hardback. Signed copy of American Spirit hardback. Let's see. Our lucky winner is. Mike Rossetti. All right. Hey. <laughs> All right, yeah. Mike. All right, Mike. So, Eric, yeah. just on Discord, just shoot me Mike's uh, address, and I'll get it out to him. Uh, let's see, today's Friday. I'll get it out to him Monday. Okay. All right. We'll get that square. Awesome. Thank you. All right, no problem. Thank you. And for the Wild Turkey Musings? Yep. Hardback, yep. Hardback, and the lucky winner is... Let's see. Nick Naylor. Hey, there we go. Heck yeah, All man. Right. All right. <laughs> so you get me Nick's address and I'll get that to him. Awesome. We'll get, you, we'll get you there. All right. Um before we uh before we hit a sign off, does anybody have any last minute questions for DJ about wild turkey and all things turkey uh is sex Well, while you guys were waiting, why don't I drink that other bottle go? <clears throat> I ran in <laughs> our latest Russell's pick and then followed that up with a with a 13. Okay. Hey, yeah. Guys. Nice. Another uh I think that we're finally going to go on campus this next year to be able to choose a barrel. We, the last two we've done have been kind of samples sent to us. So any any advice for actually physically being there? Oh god, it's 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 a, I mean, I've done both and I still do both. Like I've got a sample based pick in Columbia in two weeks from now for a store, but, but I go to the distillery usually about four times a year now. Um, sometimes more uh, than that. Like last year I went, I think six times, but usually about four times on average. Um, it's a different experience that never gets old. So like the best, the best advice I can give you is just enjoy yourself. Like, don't go in and feel like you need to be nerdy or geeky or, uh, you know, don't over criticize, don't over, uh, think it, um, the best barrel picks that I've ever been on have been just people having a good time. Um, not too good of a time because <laughs> I've seen, I've seen some stuff and I've heard some stuff too. Um, and so like, for example, like, uh, now Bruce, Bruce and Grant lead them now, but back when Eddie was doing it, one thing Eddie told me was like, he just hated like when people got too like nerdy with him, like, you know, just drilling them with questions about why y'all change this and what'd you change that? And why has this got this? And it's just like, dude, we're sipping bourbon from a barrel. Enjoy yourself. Like, don't like, right. you know, and then, uh, you know, like some people sit there and try to take notes and stuff. And it's like that you don't really have time for that. Cause it's like, and they're popping a bung, they're filling glasses, you're tasting, you know, and then, you know, you're moving to the next one. You don't really have time to sit there and like write a novel about what you're tasting. Um, the other advice I would give is just to spit a lot because it's real easy to kind of overdo it um, in the Rick house because it's fun and you're having a good time and you're telling and a lot of people, you know, just get carried away with it. And I try to tell you know, inevitably on every barrel pick I go on, almost every barrel pick I go, I, I give the same speech. I'm like, spit, just spit a lot of this. You're not disrespecting while you can dump your glass, you can spit, you know, there's, that's totally acceptable and normal. And, uh, inevitably there, there'll usually be somebody that doesn't listen to me and we end up having to find their, you know, spouse or buddy and like, make sure they're safe and dropped off well, because they just drank every sip and uh and they're done like they're like done done because like with wild turkey unlike other like you know you get a buffalo trace they roll out three barrels they've got it all ready for you and it's like this is your choice beams the same way um a lot of you others are the same way with wild turkey it's kind of like you're going to taste barrels until you found something that you're happy with if that means you can taste 10 barrels you can taste 10 barrels and you know that's the way eddie always was it was just like i'm gonna find something for you today um Usually you can find it within five or six, um, no problem. Um, but, uh, you know, they're there. Um, and, uh, so, you know, eat a good meal, 
relax, have a good time. Don't get too geeky. Don't get sloshed, you know, spit plenty, dump your glass. You know, it, don't feel like you have to take every, every single sip, but um, it's a good time. And, and you do it all in one of Kentucky's oldest Rick houses, which is the coolest thing. So like Rick house a was built in 1894. So you're in there and like all these beams and stuff were like this, the Rick house was like constructed, like, you know, well over a hundred years ago. So all this angel shear for over a century has soaked into this, these, this wood and it just has this smell to it and this funk to it. And it's just really, really cool. Like you're walking the same floors that Jimmy walked when he was 20 years old that, you know, his, you know, uh, you know, uh, how, what's the name for it? The, the guy that trained him, you know, Bill Hughes walked, you know, Ernie Rippy walked, James Rippy walked like, this is like legit history stuff here. So you're, you're not just walking it, you're smelling it, you're seeing it. And, um, I've tried to put it into words so many times in my blog post, what it's like, it's really hard. So you're right there on the Kentucky river. So you're on this cliff. It's like overlooking the Kentucky River. There's this old train trestle that goes across the river that people are bungee jumping off of. And um, it's just the building is just old as hell. And it, it's a very unique experience. So I highly recommend doing it. Doing sample picks is fine. I always have fun doing sample picks. You actually can be a little more critical with sample picks because you're not in a rush. You're taking your time. You can do notes. You can get super nerdy with it. But like at a distillery pick, it's just one after the other and it's all about having fun just going with your gut like don't overthink it like if if one of them hits you like this is a good barrel I like this one that's probably the one you need to pick don't like sit there and think about, well this one had the longer finish and that's like don't do that just just go with your gut like taste them remember in your head i really like that one that's the one you know awesome well if, uh, if anybody else have any uh, comments or anything like that, I want to thank you, David, for taking the time to do this tasting sure. with us. And uh, everybody else, thank you for signing up and the patience to uh, deal with how we get samples out to people and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and and whatnot, because this is all uh, this is all being hand delivered or uh, or just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll drop in the mailbox here. But uh, thank yeah, you all man. for taking the time out on Tequila Night, Cinco de Mayo to drink some wild turkey <laughs> and you'll have to do a, a russell's uh flight one day too that's 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 coming down the pipe <laughs> okay cool cool what, one of your picks will be in it trust me oh that's awesome are you gonna do the 13 as well I, i'm i'm thinking about it i've got um i'm probably gonna do the first iteration of 13 and your your uh your fast eddie will probably be in there oh, uh, oh wow okay that that's was my, fun, that's that my was favorite pick one. you've ever done that's my that was a fun one that one hey, that was hey, actually a sample pick just a quick question i'm going back to ohio in about two weeks for the uh for the summer so if you do another one can you ship the samples or not if um if I do it in the time that you're on Ohio, I will keep you in mind as the only person I'm going to ship to. <laughs> can I, can I, I tell y'all? That's, that's, that's all I care about. <laughs> can, can I tell y'all a secret? Now, if I tell y'all this, this is this stays here, right? Stop recording, Harry. Yep. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off the recording. <laughs> that, that no means, secrets. Wait. Turn the recording off, please. <laughs> I'm seriously. I'm working on it. All right. Hold on one second. Actually, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna edit it in in YouTube, so I'll be taking it off anyway. All right, now, all right, yeah, I'm gonna trust you with this now because I'll get in trouble. You, you, you okay. can see it. You can see it. So, Florida is one of the states that gets single. All right, we are back from not uh, talking about anything crazy. All right. <laughs> Anywho, uh, like I said, DJ, thank you for your time, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. I know we, like I said, I know we conversate a little bit on Discord, but yeah, it's always a pleasure just to just to see you, to talk, to hang out, to talk, talk turkey. And uh, everybody, thanks for taking the time on Cinco de Mayo and uh, coming out for an evening with Mr. Simpson. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank, Thank you guys. Cheers, y'all. Yeah, man. Y'all have a good one. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Right, cheers. Good evening.